Almost 500 years ago, the first contingents of adventurous men sailed across the ocean to open up a new world. One of the first places they set foot upon was a bit of land that is now the state of Florida, USA. Of course, there have been quite a few changes since then, and the new world has come a long way. But now, squarely in the middle of the very same bit of land, another new world has been opened up. Walt Disney World. destination where guests may stay as long as they like and here even a hotel is an adventure at the Polynesian village there is a leisurely atmosphere of the South Seas and trade winds the great ceremonial house dominates the scene in a setting that is lushly tropical and for each guest there is a feeling of coming to a tiny island in the South Pacific to stay and play South Seas Island is only one stop in Walt Disney World. But getting around here is another fun experience. Sleek, high-speed monorail trains silently whisk travelers around the Seven Seas Lagoon to one of the wonders of this new world, the dramatically different contemporary resort. Its unique 14-story tower building is flanked by wings of bayside rooms. One of the most unusual features of this ultramodern resort is the manner in which monorail passengers arrive. Entering high in the air, they are taken right into a spectacular open mall lobby called the Grand Canyon Concourse. The concourse, which is actually the hotel's fourth floor, gets its name from the colorful 10-story mural which covers all four sides of the central elevator shaft. Truly a modern work of art, this mural is made up of over 18,000 individually hand-painted and fire-glazed ceramic tiles. From the lobby inside to the activities and surroundings outside, everything is keyed to the contemporary theme, and there is a feeling of now, of today. From the hotels, the monorail tracks lead directly to the real heart of Walt Disney World, the Magic Kingdom. This, of course, is the place that most clearly reflects the man Walt Disney and the things he held to be of value. The wonders of nature, the fantasies of childhood, the spirit of America with nostalgia for the past and faith in the future, and above all, a sense of humor and fun. There is something for everyone in this Magic Kingdom. It is a world in which make-believe has its own reality, beginning with Town Square, Main Street, USA, as it might have been at the turn of the century. Here, the good old days are better than the good old days ever were, and everybody and anybody can join in the fun. The scene 
Things along Main Street may recall fond memories for some, but a highlight for everyone is the character parade, led by a rather familiar celebrity and the Walt Disney World marching band. Everything else in the Magic Kingdom, Main Street has its own flavor in many different varieties. same turn-of-the-century atmosphere, but in quiet contrast to Main Street, the glass-domed Crystal Palace restaurant caters to the hungry guest who prefers a touch of elegance. What more relaxing respite could be found than a bit of food and a cool drink in these delicate mid-Victorian surroundings? Going from the nostalgic charm of yesterday into the world of tomorrow requires only a brief step in space and in time. In Tomorrowland, everything is planned to fit the theme of things to come. Here, entertaining previews show some of the exciting new developments in store from science and industry. Of course, in Tomorrowland, as in any glimpse of the future, there still remains a bit of today. Up-to-date musical beat gives way to the command, ladies and gentlemen, start your engines. And drivers of all ages can experience the thrill of the raceway in scale-sized Grand Prix racing machines. gets rough on the raceway, it's only a step to the Skyway for a trip to another land in the Magic Kingdom, Fantasyland. And here, it's only an imaginary step from the heights to the depths for a submarine journey 20,000 leagues under the sea, a fantastic voyage where strange undersea creatures may be encountered at every turn. Of course, Fantasyland is also the domain where favorite storybook characters come to life against a background of childhood enchantment. entryway is a work of art in itself. Its walls covered with glittering mosaics done in hand-cut Italian glass fused with silver and 14 karat gold. Together, these murals tell the classic tale of the little cinder girl and her Prince Charming. Upstairs, dining in King Stephen's Banquet Hall is an experience fit for a king in an atmosphere of 15th century medieval splendor. 
This fairyland structure is all the romantic castles of all the ages rolled into one. And every hour that tolls on its magic clock is an enchanted time. Nearby, the Tower of Liberty Hall rises above another land and another time. Each guest may roam the streets and experience the sights and sounds of colonial America 200 years ago. This oak in Liberty Square symbolizes the actual Liberty Tree of revolutionary times. And everyone here may almost feel the spirit of 76 marching across the land. Orders for the day. Know all men by these presents. Reposing special trust and confidence in the honor, fidelity, abilities, and good conduct of Amy and Carby, I do hereby bestow the titles of Daughter and Son of Liberty. To these recipients, I now present a copy of the Declaration of Independence. The lucky boys and girls chosen at random every day to be honorary sons and daughters of liberty can take home a feeling of participation and personal pride in our American heritage. In Liberty Hall, there is to be found the most inspiring attraction of the Magic Kingdom, the Hall of Presidents. Here, in a dramatic presentation using a new film process and the miracle of audio animatronics, we pay homage to those immortal men who each in his own turn have guided this nation through perilous times. This government must be preserved in spite of the acts of any man or set of men. Nowhere in the world is presented a government of so much liberty and equality. To the humblest and poorest among us, are held the highest privileges and positions. What constitutes the bulwark of our liberty and independence? It is not the frowning battlements or bristling sea coast, our army and navy. These are not our reliance against tyranny. Our reliance is in the love of liberty, which God has planted in us. Our defense is in the spirit which prizes liberty as the heritage of all men, in all lands everywhere destroy this spirit and you have planted the seeds of despotism at your own doors at what point then is the approach of danger to be expected I answer if it ever reach us it must spring up among us it cannot come from abroad if destruction be our lot, we ourselves must be its author and its finisher. As a nation of free men, we must live through all time or die by suicide. Surely God would not have created such a being as man with ability to grasp the infinite, to exist only for a day. No. No. Man was made for immortality. From the landing at Liberty Square, magnificent sternwheelers such as the Admiral Joe Fowler cruise leisurely through scenes of a growing country, the country of which Abraham Lincoln spoke so eloquently into a time of pioneer spirits and the songs of Stephen Foster. Along the way, there is a place that holds spirits of another kind, the lively spooks and mischievous goblins of the haunted mansion. Those who make it past this ghost-infested stretch of the river find a relatively safe landing at a village right out of the old western territory. 
It's the lusty atmosphere of Frontierland, of trappers and hard rock miners and the fast gun. The wildest foot stomp and his toe down in town is the country bear jamboree with the zaniest entertainment this side of Cripple Creek. Let her rip, boys. Bow, 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 so play now in the good old key of G. Zeke and Zeb and Ted and Fred and Byron and named Tennessee. Zeke's twanging on the banjo and a tapping with his feet. A banging on a dish pine with a real old country beat. Zeb is him on the fiddle with a crooked hickory bow. When the spirit moves that rule, he can make that fiddle go. Ted is on the corn jug. Now I mean that bear can blow. He also plays the washboard with the handle of a hole. And Big Fred's playing mouth hawk. He plays it kind of sad. He never took a lesson. He just picked it up from Dad. And little old Tennessee bear is a featured on the thing. Sounds just like a guitar, but it's only got one string. So clap your hands and stomp your feet and try to keep right with them. One sure thing the bear band's got is real old country, real old. <laughs> This isn't always the case. Adventureland means exactly what the name implies, and the greatest adventure of all is the Jungle River Cruise. A fleet of launches with names from Amazon Annie to Zambezi Zelda shove off on exciting safaris through the jungles of Africa, Asia, and South America. Guests aboard may encounter menace at any time, but there's no real worry because every boatload of explorers is in the hands of an experienced guide, alert to the creatures ahead and the dangers they present. Around every bend, there is a new adventure. On the Irrawaddy of Asia, there are ancient brooding ruins under the watchful eyes of sinister temple guards. The sacred bathing pool of the Indian elephant is tucked away on the banks of the Ganges. 
These rites are seldom witnessed by man. And there's no danger so long as they are undisturbed. But danger is always present on the mighty Congo, and there are often narrow escapes. Eventually, every expedition makes it safely back to the landing. And nearby, reaching upward from the jungle rivers, is the classic Swiss Family Robinson treehouse. From here, there is a towering view of Adventureland and all the rest of the Magic Kingdom, where from the hub at its very center, all roads lead to fun and new experiences. Walt Disney once said, you can dream, design, and build the most wonderful place in the world, but it requires people to make that dream a reality. The enjoyment on every face clearly reflects that reality. The appeal of the Magic Kingdom will always be to the imagination of every guest, young or old or in between. But in the rest of Walt Disney World, there is still more to come, recreation of many kinds to choose from. There are two 18-hole championship golf courses whose magnificent greens and fairways can challenge the skill of a professional, yet give pleasure to the average player, or even the lowliest duffer. For those who prefer their sport on the water as well as in it, there is plenty of room for almost every imaginable kind of aquatic fun. private area set aside for a special purpose. Over 7,500 acres of land and water have been designated as a conservation area for the creatures native to this region. Still as primitive as it was 500 years ago, this environment will remain untouched and undisturbed by man. another wilderness set aside for the use of guests who enjoy the out of doors, the Fort Wilderness Campgrounds. There are accommodations for 800 campers, trailers or tents, each site equipped with all the modern facilities, yet in a natural setting of piney woods and stands of cypress. Here, every member of the family can find activities to his or her own taste. Part 
of the Fort Wilderness Campground is known as the Tricircle D Ranch, the home of all the horses who work in Walt Disney World. Unlike those of most working ranches, all the animals here must always be well-groomed and ready to meet their public. After a full day of outdoor fun comes the time to rest and relax a while, because there is still more to come. Twilight is a magic hour in Walt Disney World, and the sun touching the cypress is the signal in Fort Wilderness to light the campfire. It is time to gather around and join in the song and dance. Darkness descending on Walt Disney World is perhaps the most beautiful time of all, and the appearance of everything begins to change. This is also a time for guests to set out on an evening of unusual experiences in dining and entertainment. The climax of all aquatic shows in Walt Disney World is the electrical water pageant. This colorful parade is performed every evening after dark and is clearly visible from all the hotels. There could hardly be anything more romantic than a late supper and dancing on a privately chartered cruise over the calm waters of Bay Lake. But to literally top off the evening, the top of the world lounge of the contemporary resort, the highest spot in Walt Disney World, is the place to go. Reality is living proof that dreams really do come true.